Okay, hello traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Michael Boutros with you here this morning. Joe, Graham, Josh, Kay, Mark, Mario, Pete, Rob, Hussein. Great to see you guys here in the room. Uh, good morning to all of you. Eileen, good morning to you as well. So we got a lot to talk about here. Um, it's been a little bit of a hold up on the dollar crosses with the dollar index really just hovering and continuing to hold just below uh, near term support. Um, but we do have a lot of setups that we want to review. So as always, feel free guys throughout the course of the session to throw out any trade, uh, specific trades you want to review or any questions with regards to strategy. Okay, so before we get started, quick review of the uh, relative performance for the green back here to start the session. You see that the yen is the strongest performer on the session today, up 0.93%. That started overnight and continued all through Asia trade. Swissy up 0.73, and certainly that puts dollar Swiss right now at support. We'll go over that setup. Uh, Aussie with a mild gain here of 0.18. Biggest loser on this session, no surprise. Sterling, 0.33% to the downside. Still those comments in regards uh, to the referendum and possible Brexit uh, headlines will continue to plague this pair. So if you're trading the Sterling crosses, do yourself a favor, stay light. I'm not saying stay out of it. There's actually been a couple of nice setups. Sterling Key is still something that we've been watching. Um, and there are some setups, but just stay light because anytime another poll comes out or any type of referendum talk and this thing just goes haywire. So keep that in mind for the pound. Uh, looking at the dollar index, remember 12,000, if you're not sick of hearing me say it, uh, 12,123, 12,131 continues to be our critical area of resistance. Yesterday saw a perfect probe and tag of that key resistance and pullback uh, to close lower on the session. So still going to be the, the invalidation level, okay, for the short side on the dollar crosses and certainly here for the index. I'll also bring your attention to momentum coming into that basic trend line resistance extending off the highs there. So really a critical region of resistance for the dollar index. We'll continue to watch this. I just wanted to bring to your attention um, the current projections. And this is something that I brought up uh, last week and something I said we'll continue to watch. So these are the Fed futures uh, for the funds rate and where market participants are factoring in interest rates moving forward. So if you look at this again, 0.25 uh, to 0.5%, that's where the Fed funds rate is at now. Market participants are widely hold, widely expected that we'll see this continue um, or that the Fed will hold this range. 90% chance at the March meeting, 82% chance we'll still be at that same Fed funds rate um, in April. And certainly until you get into pretty much September, you start to see a little bit of a build for the possibility of another hike in rates. Interestingly enough, um, we did earlier in the month start to see the probability of a cut start to rise. You can see that that has all but dwindled at this point. So while we do have central banks around the world moving into negative interest rates, while we do have central banks around the world continuing to provide this accommodative monetary policy stance, it doesn't look like market participants are factoring and the Fed will have to backtrack at all on its interest rate hike that we made late last year. So something, a dynamic here will continue to watch and certainly as it pertains to the dollar index is very critical, okay? If we start to see this rise to 90% for April or even 80% for June, that's just telling you that market participants are factoring in the likelihood the Fed will maintain or stay steady on policy moving deeper into the second quarter and second half of the year. So we'll continue to, to um, track this. As always, guys, feel free, you have a a camera button in the top right hand corner of your GoTo webinar screen. If you'd like to take a freeze frame or a screenshot of any of the charts that you see provided here, feel free to do so. All right, so we'll we'll reference this a couple times this week, guys, and specifically after this week on Friday when we get that second or, or uh, second revision for fourth quarter GDP. If that turns out to be the tighter revision that we expect, we're definitely going to come back here and see what the deal is as far as what market participants are factoring in. Looking at that print. Okay, for the US GDP print. Here's a annualized read. Again, this is the second read for fourth quarter. We're expecting a downtick from 0.7 to 0.4% quarter on quarter. Okay, and if this comes out worse than expected or turns out to be anything sub 0.4, again, we'll take a look back to those Fed funds rate and see if we see any move on that. And as it stands, dollar index, 
still key resistance. Here's what the scalp looked like or the near-term chart looked like for the dollar index last night. And I just wanted to show you again how critical of a region of resistance this is. We probed into it yesterday, excuse me, yesterday with a really strong rejection to the downside. Here's what the 30-minute chart looks like now. Okay, so you can see we came right into that near-term support that we noted yesterday at uh, 1281, uh, just shy and kind of rebound off it. The thing I want to see, and remember, we're at resistance, but that doesn't necessarily mean the dollar is ready to turn over. Okay, it just means that we don't want to be attacking the long side of the dollar unless we breach through this, or if we break to the downside of this formation, I'd be looking to play a little bit more of a concerted dollar short type of strategy. So we were looking for a break here to really get the thing going. Remember, the objective weekly opening range low comes in just lower. So a break below 12,075 would essentially give us an objective downside bias heading into um, the latter part of the week. But we really do need to see a little bit more weakness beyond that weekly low to get this thing going. Remember, we gapped higher. Okay, So in order to fill the gap, um, we would essentially... Uh, well, kind of moved it and filled it yesterday. Either way, you get the picture, guys. <laughs> so we'll be looking for short triggers while below this region. We need to clear this downside median line formation uh, to get the validation for the turn in the index. Again, for those of us trading stateside, we can't necessarily trade the dollar index, um, but can be a very good tell on base dollar movements. At its inception, this particular dollar index, the Dow Jones uh, FXCM dollar index, is an equally weighted average of the Euro, Aussie, Sterling, and Yen. Okay, so we we'll want to keep that in mind. Eileen saying, seems maybe a Brexit also affecting the Euro dollar and can't quite decide where it will be either. Um, the dollar index reflecting this too because of the Sterling and Euro. I think that's what you're seeing here, Eileen. You are seeing some divergence, not only that, with what's happening in dollar yen as well. Uh, which is kind of seeing this thing give us a little bit more back and forth. We'll definitely go over the euro and the sterling from last night's radar charts. Um, euro, I'm very interested in possibly looking for a low here to find some support uh, to get back on the long side. With the with the sterling, Eileen, and the whole Brexit story, look, the fundamental, I guess we should just jump right into it. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, here's what the British pound looks like first on the daily. And here's what last night's radar chart look like on the pound. So 10, uh, excuse me, 10, 140.78 is the simple swing low that you made here in December. 140.61 ends up being a 1618 extension of this decline. Okay. And you saw the trade come right into here yesterday, really strong rebound to the upside. And when you see something like this causes some pause, right? Gives you some pause that you may be looking for the market kind of trying to flush out um, some of those short players. You didn't really see much in overnight. We came right back into this region again. You had some opportunity to get back on the short side. Long story short, guys, if, let me just put this black and white, to play the reversal or to suggest that we have a near-term low in place, we'd need to get A, above the low day close, the previous low day close at 142.18. More importantly, a break above this region would give us the validation for a near-term reversal here in the pound. That being said, you still want to be mindful of short triggers as this thing rallies. Here's what the 30-minute chart looks like on the pound right now. Okay, so you did see a very clean and uh, objective break of the uh, Asia opening range with the break that you saw here late last night. It's been kind of tight. Again, the ATR is 43 pips. I really wouldn't want to you know, press that too aggressively. Um, but as long as we stay above this key support, guys, short side bias is at risk. So I'm not really too excited on doing anything in the pound, which is why we put it on the radar chart. At the end of the day, if this gives out, you're probably going to see a pretty concerted run, dude, guys. It's going to be a pretty quick run. I don't think it's going to be a slow meander. Uh, you have 139.39, which is the 2618 off the high. That's the next downside target on the daily chart. really gives us kind of perspective to look at where this thing is at, okay? This is just a simple swing low from December. So 139.20 is a broader 88.6 retracement. This dates all the way back to the lows from 2009. And then just beyond that, you have the lower median line parallel for the operative structure that we've been in in the pound, essentially since, excuse me, the May high that we made last, uh, or the June high that we made last year. 
So it's make or break uh, for the pound at this level, which is why I can't haven't really touched it here at this point. Kind of just kind of gauging, see what this does. Um, there's not really much UK data. It's pretty much all this rhetoric with regards to the referendum. Uh, the major thing that we're going to look for tomorrow, uh, I guess Thursday, excuse me, the 25th is Thursday, I believe. Yeah, um, is going to be the release of GDP figures for the UK. Now, there's not any change expected. Let me show it to you real quick. Here's um, GDP expectations for the UK uh, on the 25th. Preliminary read, it's weird. They call it the preliminary read, but this is the, the secondary read for second uh, fourth quarter GDP. Not expecting any change. So what does that mean for us? How do we trade it? That means if you do see a deviation from the expectation, it's likely to be a little bit more of a market mover since the broader consensus is essentially calling for GDP to hold constant at that 1.9% year over year. Okay, that's tomorrow. So for the pound on the intraday, again, you're seeing a little bit of a lackluster momentum signature here as we continue to hold just above the lows. And again, the broader bearish bias remains in place, sub 42.50, sub 42.58. It's really going to be the bearish invalidation level here for the index. Aside from the pound, okay, the dollar event risk here is going to be big as well. And while we don't have really a lot on tap, we do have durable goods on Thursday. Most importantly, that second uh, read on fourth quarter GDP for the U.S. comes in on Friday. The only other thing I wanted to warn you guys in yesterday's piece was um, there's a lot of Fed talk this week. And while we don't concentrate on that, you do need to be mindful of when those speeches are. So I did put this up for you guys, kind of get, get you just a quick schedule for what's coming up today's major print or today's major uh speech will be from stanley fisher who's a vice chair of the fed um, it's going to be later this afternoon just be aware of when these comments come out a lot of times these jokesters just say off-cuff comments in which you'll see the dollar really start to surge or, or reverse so just keep in mind if you're any dollar um if you're any, taking any dollar exposure heading to this afternoon, this will probably be the bigger one. Fisher as vice chair moving through the week. James Bullard will come back uh, again here tomorrow. You have Lockhart and Williams, which will also be big, and that's on the 25th, same day that we get those numbers out of the UK. So specifically for the pound, keep those in mind. Any question on the sterling before we move off? Uh, Eileen says, glad for the reminders to give awareness on comment, uh, commentators. Yeah, for sure, Eileen. We want to be always aware of what can impact the positions and the pairs that we're looking at, guys. And while we're not really huge fundamental traders here, uh, it's absolutely paramount. It's like driving with, head, with uh, blinders on if you're not aware of what's the event risk on tap. All right, so I guess we might as well go through the radar charts before we jump into yesterday's update. Uh, that was the pound. The other one I'm kind of really bitter at is the uh, Aussie yet Aussie Swiss. Excuse me. Uh, we presented this on Sunday's update, and we were looking for a breakout and a pullback to get long. You didn't get any pullbacks. This thing just continued to ride right through. Uh, the major target that we talked about on Sunday was 72.25. We already hit that. Uh, we did a rework of the levels. I noted that in the report yesterday. So um, while 72.20 is not a level right now, uh, we just wanted to kind of update it to take into account more recent price action. So here's what Aussie Swiss looks like right now. And as I said yesterday, we're looking for a pullback to get long. Ideally, you get a move back towards like 71.50, and then you start to look for long triggers down here, guys. Um, for a move higher. Keep in mind the broader picture for Aussie Swiss looks like this. And the only reason that we might see a little bit more of a pronounced pullback from this region is because of the levels that we're at. First, this is the basic seven, uh, six, six, 618 retracement excuse me, from the December decline. It takes you in 72.43. We didn't quite get there. Yesterday, we turned at 72.30, which is the February open. Okay, And if we're following this track or this slope, it's getting kind of messy here, right? So we're going to, again, continue just to maintain an objective topside bias above 71.50. It's the 50%, but more importantly, basic trend line resistance should offer some support. And as long as we hold above this region, we'll be looking for long triggers here in Aussie Swiss.
Okay, matches up pretty nicely with what we're looking at on Aussie dollar, and certainly Aussie dollar is something that we highlighted in last night's intraday update, looking for pullbacks there as well to get long. But um, you know, you got that top side break of a multi-month momentum trigger in uh, the daily chart here, and you've cleared some major key levels. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing give us a little bit more of a pullback on that scenario. Again, we'd be looking for possible long exposure. So those are the, the uh, two or three setups, rather, from last night's radar charts. Any questions on Aussie Swiss, Sterling, or the dollar index? I do want to go back to the pound really quick one more second, guys. There is something I just wanted to note. Um, question here says, Aussie dollar moves seem only one-eighth of the ATR right now in short slash long triggers. So here, let me show you this, Eileen. I was looking at this before I came in today. Here's what the Aussie triggers look like last night. They're really, they weren't much. And specifically on the five-minute chart, you were all over the place. Keep in mind, we saw a really strong advance in the yen in overnight trade. Um, and I think that could have played a part here in some of these, uh, specifically some of these more calm, uh, commodity currencies, the Asia block here, Asia PAC block, but um, the one minute chart did have one decent trigger and that was on that run back in the open of London trade. So you can see here green, the open of London trade. Let me just zoom this out really quick. Remember, we have an inherent topside bias in the Aussie, right? So we're looking for long exposure. The only triggers that would have been something I would have been interested in would have been this one right here on this pullback. You have a stop against the London opening range low. Nice trigger to the upside. You would have well gotten uh, that 31 pip ATR. And then there was one more trigger that came a little bit later in the session. Would have been a long hold. It would have been positive and negative for a while, but eventually you would have squeezed it out. So when there's not much, um, when there's not many triggers, guys, we just need to be patient. Very, very simple. Here's one more that came out actually just right now, right ahead of the webinar, another long opportunity there. Either way, we'll be looking for the open for the U.S. trade session. It gives a little bit more of a tell here um, for, the, for the Aussie cross. Let's look at what we were looking at last night. Here's the intraday update from last night. So Aussie dollar looks like this. Start with the daily chart real quick. So Aussie dollar. Eileen says, saw that all over the place, quote unquote, almost wanted to take a short on it, uh, but decided just to be patient. Yeah, for the Aussie, the one thing you want to keep in mind, Eileen, is the daily chart. We talked about this yesterday. So when things are chopped like that, Eileen, we're always going to, if you're going to take a stab on it, you're always going to want to take a stab on it in the direction of the trend. Remember, Aussie dollar was holding a weekly opening range all throughout the course of last week. It never broke. Okay, here's what the Aussie 30 minute looks like. Here's last week's trade session. Here's the start, and here's the close. So we held a very well-defined range. Resistance, support, support, resistance, hold, trying to probe support, failure. Okay? So when we break the highs, inevitably when there's a lot of back and forth, your best bet is just going to be on the long side because we're playing the breakout. Does that make sense? And again, I don't want to encourage you just to jump in because we're bullish on the breakout, but if you're seeing something, a lot of back and forth like this, I'd still rather be on the long side right now, okay? We're playing a, a range, a well-defined range that held for over six days, and here's the break to the, to the upside. So remember, always, you know, when all else doubt, you're always going to want to be scalping or near-term trading in the direction of the trend. Um, you got it, Eileen. Cheers. So... 72.42, 72.41, that level that we were looking at yesterday, you didn't really get much play over it. We're still just holding it. We're kind of straddling it at this point. The major resistance is 72.65 into 72.70. We talked about this briefly yesterday. This region is absolutely important. So the scalp target is 72.65 into 72.70, but the major resistance on the daily chart extends into 72.82, and I kind of wanted to hint at that yesterday. Um, why? So 72.81 is the 2016 yearly open. The 1618 extension off the, off the lows there is 72.70, 
and then you have the 200 day moving average sneaking right in there. So give yourself some breathing room, major key resistance near term for the dollar in, uh, for the Aussie rather. Momentum, it would be the first 60 break if you plow through this of the year after holding 60 here really strongly back in December. So there's a lot to look at as we get deeper into the week and certainly as you get closer to 7270, any long exposure that you have on the Aussie, you wanna start to clean that up, okay? Um, if we get through 7281 specifically on a closed basis, you're right on, man. Next target, 7328, and that's going to simply be the December high day close. Okay, so let's just highlight that right here on a breakout type of scenario. And as we noted earlier, Objectively, you want to stay constructive above that 7177, 7171 level. Again, last week's opening range high break on a pullback should offer some support, and we should see price hold above this region. Looking for long triggers while above 7170. If we break through that 7180 level, 73, and then that December high day close, 7328. So while we're kind of hanging up here a little bit, we're kind of losing some steam with the momentum signature, certainly the levels look absolutely uh, very, very clear here on the on the Aussie. For longs, the resistance is so close, the pullbacks would have to be deeper, right? Yeah, so for me to get long from here, Eileen, I would need to get a pullback. Look, ideally you'd get this pullback, but at the end of the day, if we pull back to the opening range low for Asia, the opening range low for for London, and you see a long trigger, there's an opportunity there, 72.25 into 72.60, right? Still a nice wide range, 40 pips, you're only looking for about 26. So see here on this pop, momentum holding 60 still? Well, let's see what the US Open looks like. Maybe you get that pullback and get a better opportunity. I was kind of kicking myself when I just missed that one trigger last night, but we'll get more on this. Any questions on Aussie dollar? And just a quick look at Aussie data this week. You don't really have anything on tap. Next week is going to be the big player, guys. You got the RBA on tap next week on the 29th, so um, don't really foresee any specific Aussie data impacting this pair. Okay, I see it better. Thanks, Aaron, more than welcome. All right, moving right along. No plays on Aussie. We'll see if we can't get some moves here today. Next up on tap from last night was Dollar Swiss, and this one I think is a little bit more play. So we had the short on Dollar Swiss uh, when we wrote this article. We were looking for a move back towards 99.58. You've got it, and it's now at key support. Uh, here's Dollar Swiss on the daily, and I just wanted to highlight one thing. The ideal, and again, you know, you, you highlight these major key levels, guys. You're not always absolutely going to reach them, but the major key resistance for Swissy is up here at parity 27, parity 28, okay? The 2016 open actually comes in at 31. The 618 retracement of this year's range comes in at 10028. The upper median line parallel and former trend line support, now resistance, all converge right up here. So while I was holding a short yesterday, I'm long out of that position, I still think this thing could make a stab higher, just as a quick uh, side note there. So before we get too aggressive on the reversal, you really have a major, major resistance up there, about 10028. Here's what it looks like on the near-term chart. So we're testing basic lower median line parallel as support now. And if you guys remember, we were talking about this pair, um, or we first presented this upside slope back on the 15th. Okay, it was the first day uh, of trade, or it was Monday of last week. You saw a really nice gradient right off the lows there. Remember we were talking about we didn't have enough conviction to really call this um, median line structure in play, but we've gotten some pretty nice pivots off that median line the lower median line parallel, now catching support with the basic 236 of the advance. So, long story short, if this is just a near-term correction within the top side play, remember, this is still our bullish invalidation level. So we're looking for long triggers while above this region. If we get the break into US trade today, 
I wouldn't be looking to play the break. If it pushes lower, I'd be looking for a pullback to try to get another short trigger and move off first into the weekly opening range lows, 98.80 into 98.70 is a basic 38.2. And this is what would validate a more sharp or a more concerted reversal in dollar Swiss. Certainly plays out really well with what we're looking at on the index, right? Maybe even make another run here and then reverse. Same thing on the dollar Swiss. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another move higher. Maybe take a short against the London opening range high. But at the end of the day, we need to clear this formation before we have a conviction short bias. Any questions on dollar Swiss? It's sort of the only one I've been really uh, kind of tinkering with. And you guys know me, I'm not typically a guy who likes trading Swiss. But again, very, very clear and ready, readily identifiable targets here. So again, if we make this break, we get some color to it, just a quick drill with you guys. It's always nice to kind of give yourself some reference um, of what possible median line structures could be in play. I just kind of eyed this out right now as we're speaking. Kind of gives us a little bit more uh, conviction of this key level being a major level of support in your term. Break below that. Again, you know what your downside targets are. Feel free to take a quick snapshot, guys, if you need, of the dollar Swiss chart. None of the levels from last night have changed. Still right on. Permendra says, hi, Michael. When you have time, please look at Kiwi dollar. Sure, sure will. New Zealand, U.S. dollar. Gotcha. I just want to take a quick segue into some commodities, and I just want to touch on the CADN, which was testing support, and we'll definitely jump into all your questions. Uh, Eileen says, so you're not looking for longs here at Swiss. From here, Eileen, I am. I'm on the lookout for a long scalp from here. If it breaks, I'm not doing anything to the downside until we get a, a pull higher. Let me bring the – let's see if we have anything near term here. Oops, on this side. Mm, too close. Use another one off the highs. So you're seeing some divergence. Price action making a lower low. The oscillator making a higher low. Remember, these trigger breaks only count, only matter when the candle closes, so you don't want to get you know, faked out on a move like this and start jumping in long. Uh, we'll have to see if that closes the five-minute candle higher. From a momentum standpoint, the only thing I don't like, Eileen, here is that you're starting to get momentum range bound, and this is typically something that happens heading into the session opens. Okay, here's momentum, 60 hold, 40 hold, 60 hold, 40 hold. I kind of want to let it play itself out, all right? I do think you get a pop higher. I do like the long side from this level, Eileen. But remember, and I noted this in yesterday's piece, guys, ultimately, we'd be looking to get short on a rally higher, okay? Like I said, that 10020 level, I would love, I would love to see a short off that region or at least a probe into that region before turning over. We might get it, might not. Make sense? Thanks for the drill down then. Really uh, helpful. Cheers. Okay, so those are the highlighted setups from yesterday. We're making good time. I want to jump into your questions and some setups just that we're, uh, that you want to be super mindful of in this environment, specifically um, in the commodity block. So real quick talk uh, about gold yesterday. I just want to continue to highlight this consolidation range. I'll show you the uh, short-term chart in a moment, but you're basically seeing that stretch high that we made really just start to consolidate. Lower highs, higher lows, this consolidation will inevitably would inevitably give us a breakout now from a technical standpoint I do want to note that these wedge consolidations triangle formations typically are continuation patterns so that would suggest a topside break but that's conventional wisdom we're not trading in a conventional market and I can tell you I've seen it a million times of these consolidation patterns break to the downside check support before continuing higher long story short for gold uh, long story short for gold the broader picture remains constructive while above 111.81 near term, bullish invalidations down here at 1150. 
Okay, um, on the real near-term chart for gold. Again, I just want to show you basic consolidation. off the lows here all right so look for this break over the next few days remember typically these consolidation formations break within 10 percent into the apex so it looks like we're about there now and we're going to be on standby here for a nice move in gold i think over the next 24 48 hours here's your weekly open by the way sorry about that so you said opening range high for the week Opening range low for the week. You got rejected at the weekly open. If you get the downside break, look for that low to inevitably find some support and give us a better long exposure uh, for the broader picture here in gold. Crude is doing something very interesting as well. Crude yesterday, um, I forgot to address this in yesterday's webinar on daily effects. There was a guy who asked about it, but you were coming into a major critical area of resistance, and it's right here at 3366, a basic 618 retracement of the 2016 trading range. The basic median line formation for the advance off the lows. You remember, this is the first touch. We've been you know, this is a speculative median line. We don't know that this is in play until we get some sort of reaction either on the upper or lower bounds. Here's the final, or here's the first rather touch, giving us a little bit more validation that we should be working with this slope. Add to that downtrending sliding parallel of the current operative position, uh, you know, formation that we're in. So anyway, you look at it, crude that key resistance, a breakthrough 3365, guys, you're looking for a rally towards 3550. More importantly, that 2008 low comes in at 36.18, way back here. Okay, so the crude levels are pretty clear from here. Look for interim support at 31.44. A break back below the specific median line of this formation is what would invalidate the long side uh, near term for crude. Uh, Dave says, FYI, Saudi oil minister speaks at 8.50 a.m. Houston time for the CAD lovers to be aware. Dave, thanks for that. And certainly the Saudi oil minister is and any kind of commentary coming out from OPEC members has been pretty big. You know, last week we got that uh, headline coming across uh, all our terminals, Reuters and Bloomberg, that the, Sa that the OPEC finance ministers specifically in Saudi were saying that we agreed uh, to freeze. And basically it was an agreement that they agree to possibly freeze production, but no one has actually done it yet. So we'll see uh, what those comments hold for crude prices. I can tell you at its face value, all you've done is make a very clean February opening range. There's your opening range high for the first of the month. There's the low, and you are testing the opening range high. So if we break through this, that's gonna be a conviction break for me. I'd be looking for a run right into that upper median line parallel. Questions on crude. So with this view, I just want to take a quick segue and jump into the dollar cat. And certainly with the strength that you're seeing in crude prices, here's dollar cat. Still holding above that critical, critical support confluence. And every day that passes, that, that critical support confluence converges even tighter. So you're looking at a basic 38.2 retracement of the advance. That's 36.34. You're looking at the 100-day moving average right here. That's 36.11. Basic trend line support. This extends off the lows that you made from May. All converge right here. Even add to that basic former trend line resistance. It's a messy break. I don't even know if I want to count that as a break but it's also there over the next couple of days. So you have clear support of where you need to get the break in crude to really get going, or where you need to break in CAD rather to get this going, but it's great to see both of these trades working like this, right? You got crude coming into major resistance near term, CAD or dollar CAD on key support. Um, a question here, sorry, I missed it earlier. Also on the Aussie moves, seem to stop as US opens. Hesitate sometimes to take positions on it after London. Uh, is it just me? No, it's price action and I completely hear you and Eileen, I, nothing supersedes price action. And I continue to say that you know, wholeheartedly. Um, 
I don't blame you. I haven't. I didn't touch this at all either today too. So sometimes you just need to wait. Guys, near-term trading is, is, is more of a waiting game than any other strategy because our exposure time to the market is so small that we really need to pick and choose when we're going to be dumping that exposure in. Um, and if the clarity is not there and the triggers aren't there, the market will provide. Hold off. All right, so uh, I want to jump into your questions. Permenjo wanted to look at the Kiwi dollar. Here's what Kiwi looks like. Um, Permenjo, I'm not going to lie to you. I was talking with uh, Jamie about this yesterday. I kind of just don't like it. Um, I would love to see Kiwi weakness. Um, I'm a big advocate of you know a major, much more substantiated move in Aussie Kiwi uh, that would require, again, a little bit more of a, of a short side uh, type of bias on the Kiwi itself. But... You know, it's kind of bucked all the levels that I was looking at. So again, for me personally, I got to be on the sidelines here. Uh, the intraday chart isn't actually as bad as the daily chart. But for me, again, as I always note here, guys, if the daily chart doesn't provide clarity, very rarely do I get involved in it. So let me just take you back a, a real quick to what I'm looking at. Basic trend line resistance, this is dating back to the July high. This caught the highs that you made there in April of 2015. It caught the highs that you made in December of 2015. Ever since then, you kind of probed through, came back, probed through some more, came back, probed through some more, and here you are pulling back of just basic lower median line parallel support, now resistance. So honestly, I mean, we could see this thing move sideways for another week, week and a half. I don't know. Um, you know, if you're really hell-bent on trading this, I would say that it's m more of a range type of strategy than anything. So near-term traders, you're all in, all out on every trade for a pair like this. We're not trying to scale in. We're not trying to go for the bigger full ATR. Uh, this is something you want to be extremely nimble on. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. And again, I know this is messy, guys, but just bear with me. Let me just snap these levels for you. Okay. So again, similar to Aussie in that here was last week's opening range. Made a Monday-Tuesday stretch. You close the week within the confines of that stretch. You break the opening range high for last week. You're looking longer. This move here could invalidate it if we actually push today and we close back below that opening range high from last week. That would invalidate the long bias that yesterday gave us. Interestingly enough, where did that rally fizzle out? Former median line support, now resistance. So for Kiwi, Again, I haven't personally taken any positions on this permendra. If you put a gun to my head and say what direction, I would still say short. Um, but I would need a little bit more technical factors to show itself here before we get a little bit more excited on the short side. Remember, we've continued to pivot on this 200-day moving average. You know, we broke through it. That would be the first step on a move lower. Uh, the kind of thing that would validate it for me in my mind would be a, a simple and objective break of the weekly opening range low. If we get that, I'd be more than happy to play this back towards that key support at 6560, uh, 6550, 6547 here. Uh, that's also last week's low. Does that make sense, Permendra? Keep in mind, tomorrow you do get trade balance figures out of New Zealand. They're expected to actually be pretty darn weak. Uh, here's what those trade balance figures look like. Okay, We're expecting them to really show a big, big increase in the deficit, uh, a smaller print on exports and imports. All right, so in such an economy that's so heavily reliant on exports, certainly that drawdown might give us a little bit more weakness that we're looking for. Permendra says, thank you, Michael. Very, very helpful. Um, I read you. Right on, Permendra. Cheers, mate. Let's see if we can't get that move lower. All right, that's Kiwi Dollar. We covered crude. We covered gold. CAD yen. Just want to touch on it real quick. We talked about the uh, dollar CAD coming at some support or looking for that support yen. CAD yen also, with the yen strength that we're seeing, might give us a little bit more of that concerted uh, back and forth action, I want to say. Here's the 30 minute looks like. Again, last week's open, opening range, held right into the close, open this week above support, and we're just muddling along.
okay? We need to see the push below 81.45 on a closed basis specifically to get the validation for the break lower. At this point, for me, if we make, break this trend line, I'd be more inclined to favor playing a little bit more of a CAD yen type of long play. Um, not so crazy about getting short the yen, but that would be sort of the move here. Until this this level breaks, either a break above that trend line or a move below this key support, you're just looking continually at this range for CAD yen. And again, kind of falling out of favor with it. We presented this last week as an opening range setup. This The, the opening range never gave out, um, but I also just want to note that it's been a very messy pair from the momentum standpoint. You know, you went from over overbought to oversold, above 60, sub 40. So we'll wait for this to kind of simmer out and give us a little bit more of a definitive break. Again, consolidation here should give way over the next couple of days. And that is CAD yen. Uh, I'm getting comment here, Euro dollars. Are we on the move? Oh, we didn't cover Euro dollar. Here it goes. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I did a rework of the level. Um, I did a rework of the levels here last night on, on, on Euro dollar. And I just want to say one thing. I'm not really a fan, guys, of adjusting slopes to fit price action. Uh, slopes you know, for your median lines or for your pitchforks need to really be based on the reference points that you're using um, to derive the slope. So if we take the actual one we were looking at this week, this is what it looked like. I don't know what to do with that. That's ugly as hell. I don't know if that's a break. Are we straddling it? I don't know. A quick rethink and take this just to the lower high previous basically puts you right within the conf. Whoop. Basically puts you right within the confines of this move now, right? And so the only thing I just wanted to highlight is the same levels that me and Jamie have been talking to you about. I'm sure he's been noting it uh, in the midweek strategy, uh, strategy webinar. Major key resistance, former key support that we talked about last week, right here at uh, 1045, 1055, 1058. Major key support near term, 10960, 10964, the 618 retracement of the advance. You have that 100 day moving average just lower. Here's what the daily chart looks like. So, um, you know, ideally, the thing I would have been looking for would have been a hold somewhere in this region here. We broke below, that's near resist, that's now resistance, support is right here. You have the stretch highs from December, so again, the December opening range in and of itself, the highs come here. The 618 retracement, as we just noted, of the advance and the 2016 range at 109.63, the 100-day moving average. Most importantly, basic former trend line resistance, now support. Wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. See a pop higher, move lower, then continue on our on our merry way. Uh, in time, and this is just something again. I don't want to make this a practice for you guys, but in time. Um, if this continues to muddle sideways, you'd extend that major key support to here. Basic tag of the median line that we're in, the formation. This is the, the December. Is that true? Okay, I might have moved that line from somewhere. Hold on one sec. Oh, this is the December high day close. It is true. <laughs> right here. December 15th high, we spiked right into uh, 109.89. The close of that session was much lower on this session, and that was at 109.24. Okay, and that's going to be the bullish invalidation level for the broader advance that we've seen off of the December low. Okay, so last-ditch effort support for the euro. Near term, I'd be looking for a uh, long triggers coming into 109.60, long triggers heading into 109.20 specifically if it's later in the week or early next week um, for long triggers at these specific points. On a near-term basis, Eileen, I really don't have a play for it, which is why I haven't really been po been focused on it. Uh, if we just work with this structure right now that we kind of just adjusted this, the slope for, the upper median line parallel also comes in that key region. So for Euro, I'm looking for run into 109.60 or a breach above 110.58. That's the only thing that matters to me. 
Everything else is just noise for Euro, in my humble opinion, in the near term. Now, there was a comment said earlier about if, you know, the Brexit occurs, you know, what's that going to do to the euro? Uh, it's funny, actually, CNN yesterday called me, CNN International, and they want to do an interview uh, on the Brexit and, you know, the possible implications for currency markets. Look, the sterling, obviously, the major impact you would expect to see is sterling weakness. Um, you know, the euro uh, membership really does have broader implications and advantages for the UK. Um, if they do decide to pull out, you know, one of the inherent things you look for is just sterling weakness. Now, a lot of people are saying that's going to be a drag on the euro as well as their closest trading partner. You know, what does that do for the broader euro area economy as well? So I'm not really looking into all that. Again, the Brexit, guys, the referendum isn't till June. And just to put things out there, the referendum doesn't necessitate by law that policymakers follow that recommendation. Meaning, and again, this is just putting things completely explicit if the referendum comes a hundred to zero that everyone wants to leave the eurozone it doesn't still necessarily mean that policymakers are legally binded to taking that route more so um, the government just wants to take a more a gauge of the electorate to see you know where that where the broader consensus stands uh, my humble opinion again is no chance that they leave it would be a very I, it wouldn't be a, a, a financial uh, economically sound decision let's just put it like that in my humble opinion but don't try to connect too many lines together guys with you know what the implications are for brexit across all the pairs the major impact obviously would be on the euro and if that's an opinion that you want to express euro pound is something that you'd want to take a look at and this is something that again if you see major outflows we've been talking about the euro pound long side ever since that break that we saw back in January of the upper median line parallel of the 100% extension, which kind of took out the scenario of this possibly being just a correction, that expanse coming to the 50% retracement from the advance all the way from that high that we made uh, in 2013, late 2013. So long story short, on a, on a Brexit type play, um, I'd be looking for either a breach above 78.90, in which case you look for 80, 80, 60. Um, or a more concerted break back below that stretch high from December, more importantly, 75, uh, basically 76, let's call it, which is, again, the objective monthly open. Does that make sense, guys? Interesting discussion on the Brexit. Appreciate your thoughts on it. And for Forex, cheers. Uh, Graham says, if the UK referendum is out, it won't be. Uh, it's up to two-year process to leave the EU, and it's never been done. Uh, Graham, that is, if we want to get into this, guys, again, I don't want to get too too far off topic from price action, but let me just say this, Graham, and I completely agree with you. Um, the one caveat is this. It's not so much whether they leave or whether they don't leave. It's two things, guys. It's the precedent that it sets for current struggling Eurozone members, okay? Um, what that means uh, for struggling periphery nations, specifically when we get another Greece price crisis, which is all going to come down the pipes again, guys. Nothing's been solved. Everything's been kicked out. You're going to hear concerns again about, um, you know, um, Greece and whether they've been able to uh, implement enough austerity to really get them out of the hole. Spain could be another problem that'll creep up again if market conditions tighten up. So what precedent does that set for current Eurozone members? The second point I wanted to make Graham which talks to what you're noting is that it's never been done for more never been done before so the market doesn't even really know what that decoupling process would look like and that's really the major concerns for the instability it could cause um, K says do you think they should stay in or out the UK and the Eurozone humbly K 100% they should stay in again that's just my humble opinion I think the UK has got the, the sweetheart deal in fact because uh, uh, unlike other uh, Eurozone nations um, that are deeper, more integrated into the Union. They do have their own currency. They do have their own central bank. So they're not tied to, um, you know, the uh, the monetary um, union uh, as much as other Eurozone members are. Uh, but largely speaking, I do think that it's in their best interest uh, to stay. And I think that Cameron and some of the officials more wider, more widely uh, do agree with that opinion. It's just the electorate um, will be interesting to see what their opinion is on the broader scope of things. But um, if, again, I put a gun to my head, what's going to happen in December? I don't really think that they'd leave. 
<laughs> I like that line, uh, Graham. He says, it's more of a neverendum, not a referendum. I'm guessing we will see a chop on sterling daily charts for months every time a politician opens their mouth. And that's going to be the risk for Gra uh, Graham. I think you're 100% right. That's going to be a risk for the sterling crosses moving forward is this rhetoric coming out from officials. Um, I'm trying not to let it filter too much into my day-to-day -day process for trading. Um, if we see a sterling cross that has a beautiful setup, I'm going to take it. I want to be mindful of when we're getting major officials commenting, when we're getting economic developments from the UK, but um, that's going to be an unforeseen thing, Graham, as, as is the, the case with any central bank rhetoric or any central bank talk or intervention. Uh, sterling versus some of the crosses has been something that we've been following. So if you guys remember last week, Sterling Key, uh, we highlighted that major, major critical support, 214.37 to 215.67. You got a break of that early in the week. First target got taken out, uh, which was right here. I believe it was 210.55, which was the stretch highs from that 2014 um, September advance. The September high day close or the yearly high day close comes in just lower. And that comes in at 209.10. So another one, you know what I'm saying? If the Kiwi gives us weakness, again, this might see some more chop side. If the Kiwi stands still and Sterling continues to press those lows, look for this to be your last ditch effort here. Support a move below there, and you're looking for a basic 764, that's 20680. The broader 1618 of the decline takes you all the way down into 20070. Uh, so I don't foresee this happening just because of the severity of the strength that would be needed in the Kiwi to bring that down. But we'll have to see. All right, any other questions on the Sterling or the referendum? Good discussion, guys. Sorry to get a little bit off topic, but there's been a lot of interest, I'm sure, uh, with all the headlines that you're hearing on what implications this might have on currencies. Uh, dollar yen. I just want to touch on this uh, last night. Uh, we got uh, stopped out on the swing side of things on that break lower. It was a real surge. I was watching it happen. Uh, I was with Jamie last night. The, you know, the break really just kind of took a quick, quick turn to the downside early in the session. Once we broke back below the weekly opening range, there's kind of sayonara to this one. Uh, here we are testing that again as resistance. All right. Um, take this new retracement level. Uh, down to that new low. Again, I hate doing this until we have a concerted low, but just to keep the reference levels there, if we do move higher, uh, near-term resistance is going to be at the weekly open, at the 618 retracement, at the low day close, former low day close, one, uh, what is that, uh, 112.39, near-term resistance for dollar yen. Okay, I was looking at this region yesterday, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe it's just a simple break of channel resistance. Go back, check channel resistance as support, and move off. But we continued after this dump here and failure to break back above the weekly open. We continue to mutter lower. So I don't know if that's going to be our play, guys. And for the dollar yen, you know, the abomination does abominatory things. So we'll continue to be steadfast here on this on the uh, dollar yen. Daily charts all over the place. I really don't have clear structure on this. I think Jamie's got a better hang. Uh, on dollar yen than I do, but from the near-term prospects, these are the levels I'd be looking at, all right? Um, to validate that this is just a break of resistance, check his support and move off, this is the region you need to clear. All right, and if we do clear it, and this is way ahead of time, but just to think, just to bring you guys along the thought process, if we do see a topside break, they need to start to want to look for near-term structures of the advance. And maybe, just maybe, something like this might offer us some guidance moving forward. This is the first area threshold we need to clear. All right. Uh, do you sometimes jump in seeing these runs, or is is it always chasing, like in dollar yen, for example? So I'm going to be completely brutally, brutally and embarrassingly honest with you, Eileen. Sometimes I do. Um, and it is chasing, 
I can't tell you that uh, when I do it, it's you know strategy, and when else someone else does it, it's chasing. No, it's chasing plain and simple. Um, on a specific move like this, Eileen, I probably wouldn't. The time I do uh, tend to take a runner like that is on a release. So, for example, if price is holding just below or buckling just below resistance or just above support, and you see some sort of release, a headline, economic data print, a comment, give you a clear break of confluence, resistance, or support, yeah, sometimes I'll jump into that and just kind of ride it up as fast as I can. At that point, I'm giving no reference to the ATR. I'm simply playing momentum. I'm looking at a one-minute chart, looking at a five-minute chart. As soon as I see that the momentum signature starts to turn, I'm out. Um, again, that's a chasing mentality, Eileen. I don't want to encourage anyone to do that, um, but sometimes you've got to kind of go with your gut on it. All right. <laughs> okay, she says, I got it. Right on. Um, if there are no other questions, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Again, remember some of the commentary tonight. Um, you know, we got that uh, Stanley Fisher, who's going to be the vice chair, making comments. I think that's going to be the major hit for the dollar crosses heading into today. Later in the week, Thursday, durable goods. Friday, uh, obviously, the GDP report, and we'll have a lot more updates before then. Give you an update later tonight, and we'll be back here tomorrow morning at 8.30 for another intraday strategy webinar. Till then, best of luck trading, guys, and we will see you tomorrow. Cheers.